licensing, there's two schools of thought. You know, Aaron and I talk about it all the time. There's people like Eddie, you know, we asked him, well, why do you, why did you go this route? He said, for the money, he was honest. You know, so he's doing like volume tracks and most of them are instrumentals and he's good at it. He set up all these assembly lines to do that. So that's one school of thought. And then there's another school of thought, which is I'm gonna be an artist. I'm gonna be myself. I'm not gonna set up an assembly line. I'm gonna make an album. And when the album is done, whenever that is, I'm gonna shop it. And it's gonna be done the way I want it as an artist. Not under deadline and <laughs> right. So here we have kind of, we have kind of a, we're like right in the middle tonight because there's a certain pressure. We're in a big studio. There's so many people here, you know, I'm pushing to get you guys to get through the rehearsal and get it going, right? So we do have a bit of a, like the assembly line, let's go. But, and yet it's very artistic, you know, we're just collaborating on something. We're not planning for it to be anything in particular. It's just coming out. So, but the main thing is, is like that, have your intention really focused from the beginning. Don't get warmed up while you're playing. And that happens a lot in the mm -hmm. studio. Singers, and I know you, often with a singer you have to go, okay, that was good. You really, we're gonna go, we're not gonna go back and do the first verse again, exactly. right? It happens all the time. Because mm -hmm. the second verse was awesome from there, but the beginning they were warming up. So that's just one thing to keep in mind, okay? And then we'll go over as we're recording, <coughs> David and I will go over specific recording techniques. But I just wanted to start from the human side. All right. So let's get through the uh, rehearsal fast, make it efficient, and then we're going to start laying down tracks. <laughs> how I feel. Okay. Yeah. It is not right or wrong, it's just... As I sit here compressing it on the way in. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I mean, ba bass is... No, we were talking about vocals. Oh, you were? Oh, okay. Yeah. No, yeah. bass is one thing I will compress going in. Okay. It's a, it's an electronic yeah. instrument. Yeah. It reacts a certain way, and it sounds really good compressed. Yeah. And it kind of... This is my opinion, but bass, when compressed a certain way, can't sound bad. I don't know if that makes any, it just doesn't sound bad if you compress it a certain way. It just sounds, oh, it sounds good. Yeah. So like, why wouldn't you? Yeah. In that case. Because if you wanted to go in and do the stuff we do with vocals on the bass, uh, it's, it's way more work. Yeah. Way more work. Yeah. So it'll be harder than it'll be fun. Yeah. But what's, um, so there is a difference going on, on the way in, hitting the bass on the way in, in like, so you wouldn't compress bass afterwards and be able to no, get the same effect? Or no, you're saying you I can would, do but both? I would, but it's just efficiency, okay. workflow, speed yeah, okay. at that point. But for vocals, I'm with you. I'm, my workflow and speed, I'm not going to speed up because I compressed on the way in. And I'm committed, so I don't want either of those. I agree with you. On that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's that performance side too. As a vocalist, some compression actually helps you sing. That's about as hard yeah. to me. Jamming into my ear. But, so it's a, it's a trade off. Yeah, and so what I do for that, what I do for that is just I route a compressor <laughs> to the headphones nice. that doesn't go in. Oh my god! <laughs> so the singer is hearing slightly compressed, awesome. compressed track. So I'm giving, you're getting the best of both worlds. You're getting the best performance, and I'm getting the best signal.
I finally see the light. 